everybody, I'm Nick, and we just got an announcement from Microsoft letting us know what their vision is for .NET 9. And it's in this blog over here, which I'm going to go through in this video. However, people seem to be very upset about that blog and the vision for .NET 9. And we're going to see this Reddit post and the comments down below because, well, it's pretty empty like many things are missing and i think i know why so in this video we're gonna see what's coming what the problem with that blog is and my own opinion on all this matter if you like of content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe for more training check out our courses on domtrain.com okay so what is this blog post about it came out a few days ago and it's all about welcoming you to .NET 9 and the fact that Microsoft has a plan for where .NET 9 is going. Now, I want to remind you, .NET 9 is an STS, not an LTS. .NET 8 is an LTS. So just to quickly remind you, .NET is released every year, every November. And you can see that .NET 6 is still supported until November 2024 when .NET 9 is out. And now .NET 8 is out and that will be supported for the upcoming three years. So long term support, three years, standard term support, 18 months. So .NET 9 will be a standard term support release. Now let's see what the goal is for Microsoft for .NET 9. The goal is to make .NET development more productive using Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and the C Sharp Dev Kit. Obviously, Microsoft killed VS Code on Mac, and the combination of Visual Studio Code and the C Sharp Dev Kit is what is trying to fill in that gap and also compete with Rider. And the last thing they mentioned, which I think is also a big part of .NET in general, because .NET is a free product, but it sort of drives sales into Azure, is making cloud deployments easier using Azure services. Now, the first thing they talk about is making this platform great for cloud native development. And this couldn't be clearer because .NET Aspire, one of the upcoming flagship features of .NET, which I also really, really like, is mentioned here as the top priority in a way. Microsoft wants to have an in-house, easy-to-use solution that brings everything together and effectively, they can sell you Azure in a very, very neat way. There's a reason why .NET Aspire has a very easy deployment to Azure, and it doesn't have that for anything else. You can still use Aspirate for Kubernetes, and I'm going to have a video on how to do that in the future, and that's coming. But .NET Aspire is supposed to have Azure as a first-class citizen when it comes to deploying it. Now, there's also a massive drive in native AOT, and then they talk about the eShop reference, which you can use to see how .NET comes together with .NET Aspire. All of this is very, very cool. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called Deep Dive into Modular Monoliths. And it's a direct sequel from the Getting Started delivered a few weeks ago by our Dallas or Steve Smith. Steve did an amazing job with that first course and you loved it. So we had to get out the Deep Dive one as fast as possible just to see how the whole application is completing and being ready to go to production with more features and more modules to have a complete modular monolith, which in case you don't know, I think it's the Goldilocks zone between microservices and old bad monoliths. It's where most people, and by most, I mean almost everyone should start before they feel like they have to go anywhere else, maybe microservices or maybe even further. Both the deep dive and the getting started should be taken by every .NET developer working in modern .NET. There's so many best practices you're going to learn there. And to celebrate the launch of the deep dive, you can use code modular20 at checkout or use the link in the description to claim 20% off that course. And you can also add the Getting Started course in your basket for a massive discount if you don't have that already. And on top of that, we also have a From Zero to Hero Modular Monoliths bundle now, which allows you to combine both courses with 20% discount. Okay, now back to the video. Then .NET and Artificial Intelligence. I personally don't know anyone and haven't heard anything about things like ML.NET. And I think it's a very interesting technology, but if you are to do AI, Let's be honest, you're probably not going to use .NET or C Sharp. You're going to use Python because that's where the market is. That's where you have the biggest developer pool. And it's a really hard ecosystem to go into because of how much code is already there. In a way, it's very much a monopoly. And later, and that was retroactively added from what I understand, you have the .NET 9 backlog. This wasn't here, but people started complaining about this blog post, if I remember correctly. And now you have the .NET MAUI, the Blazor, the f -Sharp, and the c -Sharp backlogs being published here. So if you click on any of those, you're going to see individual backlogs on what's coming on, for example, c -Sharp 13. You can see all that here. So supposedly we're going to get things like semi-auto properties, parameters on span, default into construction, roles and extensions. 
hopefully at some point, please deliver this thing. It's a really cool feature. But as you can see, no discriminated unions. I don't think they're going to be coming anytime soon, if ever. To be honest, I don't think we're going to ever get them, actually, because they clash with other things that already exist in C Sharp. And then the same thing with ASP.NET Core, same thing with MAUI, which looks a bit um, empty. <laughs> which, by the way, is fine, because what I understand is MAUI really needs to actually be stable over anything and have all the bugs fixed and iron out, hot reload, debug diagnostics. They should focus on that, and I'm thankful they are. They shouldn't keep pushing with features, as they have been doing for quite some time now. Uh, and then F Sharp is a language that exists. Let's take a look at the comments, but I want to take a look at the comments on Reddit, because Reddit tends to not be the most positive place to get comments. People tend to be a bit more spiteful there. So let's take a look at what this post is saying. The .NET 9 roadmap is solely lacking needed updates. Let's see. So the roadmap was published and to say it's underwhelming is an understatement. Now, don't get me wrong. Improving tooling for native AOT is useful. Side note, I still don't know if native AOT is going to be massively adopted. I am guessing it won't. It will be way more niche and it depends so much on NuGet packages to update their code for it to be usable, at least effectively usable. So I'm a bit skeptical. But then the overall focus appears to be on AI and .NET Aspire. I would be more interested in .NET Aspire, to be honest. That's the only thing I saw on this page that I'm really, really interested in. And I should also add over here that it's very much about Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code with C Sharp DevKit. Now, if the focus of AI brings in some Python developers, let us all hope that they can actually code. Meanwhile, AI developers from OpenAI are laughing all the way to the bank on an L5 with a million in total compensation. So demands. Discriminated union, you're probably never going to see that coming in C-sharp, officially anyway. Improved support for DSL, again, I don't think you're actually going to see that really anytime soon. And then eliminate Maui's legacy XAML and replace it with a correct syntax using WinUI 3. Having just reviewed two upcoming courses on Dome Train or Maui, I have to say Maui itself conceptually is really, really cool. And thankfully in that course, we didn't use XAML at all. We used a different solution with C-sharp, but I have to say XAML is yeah kill it so what do the comments say well it seems the roadmap is done by the runtime team c sharp and maui are done from other teams so it doesn't mean it's not coming it's just not done by the runtime team now that is cool but it's undeniable that dotnet and c sharp as concepts are for some people the same thing even though they're not for some people they are so not mentioning it in a blog post called our vision for dotnet 9 is a very bad idea at least C Sharp should be here. You should tell us that C Sharp 13 is coming. We have a plan. Don't commit on anything, but say we're reviewing and looking at these options. Then another very popular comment is, I'm fine focusing on bug fixes for a cycle. Now, I don't know about you, but I haven't really encountered runtime or SDK issues with .NET in general. Sort of ever. Maybe a couple of times in my career, there was something that needed to be fixed. And Microsoft has a two-week cycle for bug fixes. So those very important ones are being patched quickly. So this sounds more like bug fixes for things like Maui and so on, but not necessarily for C Sharp. So I don't think that this is upvoted because it is about the bug fixes. I think it's upvoted because it slows down the pace of .NET pushing out new features all the time that many people are not happy with because coming from a .NET framework where you got a new feature every, I don't know, Olympics or something. Now you get them every year and they're big features as well. That being said, if .NET Aspire releases in .NET 9, which I think it will, then you're going to have a massive feature being released in .NET 9. And I really hope it's out because I really, really want to talk about .NET Aspire even more. And then you have the other comment, which is discriminated unions are just never coming out. And I kind of believe that. Like, and ironically, I don't think we're ever going to get um, discriminated unions, at least the way most people are expecting them. And having talked with C Sharp language designers, uh, we've actually talked about this with Miles Torgens and the Keep Coding podcast as well. If they come, because they're conflicting with existing object oriented programming models, especially inheritance, it's very unlikely you're going to get them the way you expect them. So clearly the .NET team can't please everyone, but in my opinion, they should have put Maui and C Sharp explicit sections here to show that 
there's still some work going on that. Yeah, you can assume that this is happening, but when you put out a blog called The Vision for that thing, at least understand your audience. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about this? And also let me know, do you think we're ever going to get discriminated unions? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.